If you remember earlier, we went over this file. This was a pretty simple configuration here. We talked mainly about this line here. And you know how we have the ID of the servo, we have the length of the packet, we have the instruction, and then we have the parameters, the two parameters. So we're going to take a look at um, another file and we're going to see another example of this. So we're looking at this uh, ARM project fast movement.py and um, in the beginning here it's all pretty much the same as the um, as the other file. This might change for you. You'll use either TTY as zero or TTY AMA zero. I define a class here with some methods because I'm reusing a lot of this code and it's just easier to um, to do it this way. And here's our instruction packet here. And we'll talk about this uh, in a second. But uh, you know I have I have some methods here and then I also have some functions defined. And they're pretty self-explanatory. The only thing um, that you need to be aware of here is that these numbers here correspond to the servo ID and then this corresponds to the uh, location. So it's either going to be the servo is either going to be pointing at the bottom most position, the middle or top. Then we instantiate the object here, and then um, we put it back. We put the arm back in neutral start position in case we killed power before and it wasn't in neutral start position. It'll go back to start neutral position. This is just a for loop. Um, I usually play around with three here, three iterations, but uh, you can do one or thirty. I try to be as descriptive as possible with my comments. You know, move arm up. Obviously, um, obviously, the, the arm is moving up from neutral position. is moving straight up. It moves to the right to pick up the object. Goes down. Opens the gripper. closes the gripper, once it has the object, it moves the arm back up. Goes over to the far left and then deposits the object. Gripper open, leaves the object. And then it goes back to neutral position. Goes back up, goes back to neutral. And then it does the reverse. And that's pretty much uh, all the code that's in the file. Now we're going to talk about the instruction packet. Since this to you looks um, pretty cryptic right now. So again, um, just like on the um, dynamixel write id.py file, you're going to have the headers, the two headers, you're going to have the ID, you're going to have the length, you're going to have the instruction. So it's going to be headers, ID of the servo, the length, so if you want to calculate the length in this particular instance. Um, the bytes before the checksum are the parameter bytes. Okay, so you'll go one, two, three, 
four, five. And remember we add all the parameters and then we add them to two. So it's going to be five plus two is seven. Anytime you make any changes, if you add more parameters, you have to update this. And then we have the instruction. So if you remember from the from the previous example, if we go back to the protocol 1.0 document, you'll see here this is an instruction to write, right? So we're writing to the servos uh, table-based registers. So again, ID, length, write, 1E. So you haven't seen this before. The 1E corresponds to, if we go back to the control table, the goal position is 1E. So obviously this is decimal 30, right? But um, if you look here, decimal 30 is going to be 1E. So that means that we want, we're writing a goal position. And uh, we're sending it two bytes. If you look here, it says size bytes. This is the number of bytes that are required by the instruction packet. So goal position always requires two bytes. That's why you have to send two bytes. And um, I'm going to show you what this number is here. So these two bytes here, this is how they're, they're uh, calculated. You have, for example, um, 3800. These are obviously, obviously hex numbers. Don't confuse them with uh, decimal numbers, OK? So if you wanted to write hex uh, position 138, you would use 38 for the first byte and 1 for the second byte. And that corresponds to decimal 312. So let's look at this example. You want the motor to move to position hex 220. You would put in 00 for the first byte, which would be right here, 00, and then 02 for the second byte, which would be this one. And that corresponds to decimal 544. So if we go back and look at the uh, goal position, you are If you want to move to 0x220, then you see here how this says 200, 0x200. So you would be moving just a tiny bit beyond that point. And you see, as you can see, it's 544 here, decimal. And uh, this is the decimal number 512, so you're going a little bit over to 544. I know it seems kind of confusing here, because um, one of the challenges that I had was that when I looked at a number like 38, I assumed instinctively that it was decimal but you know that it says here hex so these are all hex numbers even though they look like decimal numbers so this is just something to keep in mind so
so this is um, this is telling the um, the the servo to move to 38, right? So if you do 38 hex, you're moving to decimal 56. And decimal 56 is going to be somewhere around here. You know, not, not very far at all. Now this is kind of tricky. The next, the next uh, two bytes are kind of tricky. Because this is telling the servo at what speed it should move, the angular velocity. And then you might ask yourself, well, why isn't the angular velocity byte, why doesn't the angular velocity, velocity byte precede these two uh, bytes? The, um, the moving speed is 32 decimal, right? And it requires also two bytes. But, um, so 32 would be 0x20. So theoretically, we should be seeing um, a 20 byte, a byte that says 20 right before 9600. But the reason that it's not required is because when they are when these positions are sequential, meaning goal position and moving speed are right next to each other. When you specify the moving speed right after goal position, the server knows what you what you mean. They, it knows that this is implied. So that's why. That's why you don't need to specify that. Anytime they're sequential or right next to each other, you just put them right in. And then again, this is the checksum. And if we want to calculate the checksum, the easiest and fastest way to do it is to grab all these, all these bytes here, go to our checksum calculator, just paste the bytes in here, calculate, and remember we're always going to get one more. So we got 0, 09, so we just re, uh, so reduce it by 1, and you get 8. That's, that's the, definitely the fastest and easiest way to do it. And uh, what we're going to talk about next is how to actually change the numbers and, and observe how it affects the motors in real time.